Okay, my name is Brian Stevenson and I am your host. It's This Week's Cyber Chronicle. We scrub the internet so you don't have to. We talk about the five most popular articles shared on the internet and this week is no different. We've got some five really interesting articles. We have a CPU flaw from Intel we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about a Georgia governor candidate, Brian Kemp, and what he has stated. We're going to talk about almost all Pakistani banks have been hacked. After last week, we talked about the Pakistani bank that was hacked. And we're going to talk about voting machines in Wisconsin and Kentucky are still using FTP. And the number one article, you're not going to believe this, as U.S. internet traffic has been flowing through China for it looks like a couple, two and a half years. So you're going to want to stay tuned for that one in particular. So let's get started. Okay, the fifth most shared article of the week comes to our friends from the Hacker News. A new Intel CPU flaw exploits hyper-threading to steal encrypted data. Uh, you want to go through this. The, the new vulnerability is codenamed Port Smash. I wonder where they come up with these names. Uh, is it another dangerous side effect? Vulnerabilities discovered in the last year, including Meltdown and Spectra and TLE Bleed and Foreshadow. I love these names. It's like wrestling teams. Um, it's discovered by some researchers of Tempera University of Technology in Finland and the Technology University of Havana, Cuba, founding some vulnerabilities in hyper-threading. Essentially what it does is it runs alongside if you're running hyper-threading and you may be able to discover um, codes, past codes, crypto codes, and other things at the same time. Read the article. It's a, a new uh, CVE 5407 if you want more details on it. That was our fifth most popular article shared across the internet last week. Okay, the fourth most shared article of the week is Brian Kemp is weaponizing good cybersecurity as authoritarian play ploy against Democrats. This was published by Motherboard vice.com. So the Secretary of the State, Brian Kemp, is in a gubernatorial race. He said that he is investigating the Democratic Party of Georgia over a failed cyber attack that attempted to breach online voter registration systems. It's pretty notable that this occurs just two days before the election. Um, it includes no evidence or details whatsoever. Besides being responsible for election security, Kemp is also the Republican nominee for governor. So there's a lot of irony, hypocrisy in there. I'm not going to get into this article that much. It's a lot more political than uh, than security related, but it was the, uh, what do we got here? Fourth most shared article of the week. The thing they did talk about, though, is in August, state of the state office exploded over 6 million records in Georgia and notoriously has the least secure voting system in the country. Um, and Kemp refused assistance from the Department of Homeland Security ahead of the election, which would help secure the election system even more. So, um, opinion looks like hypocrisy. I'm not going to talk about politics, but that was the fourth, fourth most shared article of the week. Take a look at it. Um, I'm not even sure if he's won the race yet or not because I don't follow that shit. So we're going to move on to the third most popular article of the week. Okay, where there's smoke, there's fire. Third most popular shared article of the week comes to us from Don.com. And we'll have this listed again below in our description on, uh, on YouTube and various other social media things. But the, uh, the shocking revelation, if you remember last week, there was a bank from Pakistan that, that showed that they were breached. The Fed Federal Investigation Unit of the Cyber Crime Unit within Pakistan now states that almost every bank in Pakistan has been breached. So virtually every bank has been breached. Ten, ba ten banks blocked all international transactions immediately. They shut down any sort of transfers that go across uh, the country lines. But this is impacting anybody within Pakistan using their banking system. So um, that's quite a breach. The entire country's banking system got breached. That was our third most popular article of the week. Let's move on to number two. Okay, the second most shared article of the week on cybersecurity last week was from boingboing.net. Boing what a bizarre name for a uh, website. But anyway, voting systems in Wisconsin and Kentucky are running FTP seriously was the title of the article. Um, FTP, as a lot of people know, has been notoriously insecure, and the article alleges it's alarming that they are using this in their voting system. 
Um, Kentucky's information systems got required a password to access their FTP servers as of late Wednesday when they sh had this article released, um, which showed a list of files without passwords. There was nothing breached that was shown to be breached, and a spokesperson for Kentucky State uh, declined to say if FTP server was problematic. He did state that they did have other security measures deployed to ensure that there's no um, breaches within their organization. So this is just an accusation. They're, fi they're finding that they're Wisconsin and Kentucky still using some relatively old technology. Not a shock, but uh, given our political climate right now, they're throwing everything against the wall. So that was our second most popular article of the week. Okay, before we move to our number one, and stop turning off this video at this point. I know who you are. Uh, watch this entire thing. We'd like to thank our sponsors, Fortinet, FireEye, Komodo, for helping us put this podcast together. Without you, it wouldn't be possible. Let's get on to a quick commercial from Focus Point, our main sponsor. Thanks. Focus Point Technologies is a woman-owned cybersecurity solutions provider. We are headquartered in Minnesota and we have a unique approach. Our Security Technology Optimization Program, or STOP as we like to call it, takes a look at unused and overlapping functionality in the tool sets that you already own with the goal of lessening the number of vendors in your environment and saving your organization money. Give us a call at 651-330-5521. Okay, the number one most shared article of the week. You're not going to believe this. Strange snafu, snafu, misroutes domestic U.S. Internet traffic through China Telecom. Explain that one to me, Tui. Um, so let's just read this real quick here. It says, China Telecom, a large international communications carrier with close ties to the Chinese government. Wait a minute. Chinese government owns everything in China. That is the Chinese government. Misdirected bis chunks of internet traffic through a roundabout path that threatened the security integrity of data passing between various backbones for the last two and a half years. And it uh, remains unclear if the highly circulous paths were intentionally hijacking the internet's border gateway protocol or were just caused by an accident. What do you think? Uh, you can read the article, the routing snafu involved U.S. internet traffic started in 2015 and lasted two and a half years. Uh, numerous carriers are not commenting about it, including Verizon or China Telecom would not comment on the post in the article. Very well written. Um, it's on ARSTanisha.com. We'll have the link below. And that was our number one most popular article of the week. So that does it this week for the Cyber Chronicles. Thank you so much for listening and subscribing. If you have not subscribed, please put the click the subscribe button below. Look forward to seeing you guys next week, and take care, and always be safe. Take care.